I get everybody. I'm Joe Gale. And I'm Paula Lopez. 70 years ago tonight, a Japanese submarine bombed an oil field along the Elwood coast near Goleta. The incident marked the first foreign act of aggression on the U.S. during World War II. And today, local leaders acknowledge the anniversary of this historic attack. Keys reporter Sharin Roger is live with our top story. Sharin? That's right, Paul. The year was 1942 when a Japanese submarine attacked an oil field in Goleta Valley. Now, no one was hurt, but it jolted the entire community. And today, city leaders went back to that very site and dedicated a sign in remembrance. Let's take a look. It was the night of February 23, 1942. During the Second World War, and in an eerie coincidence, as some historians would say, former President Franklin D. Roosevelt was giving a speech to the nation. Around the exact moment in his speech when he says that uh, the Japanese could attack the coast of North America, this is when 80 pound shells start falling on, on Goleta. It was just around sunset when a Japanese submarine surfaced off the Elwood coast, aiming fire on the oil fields in Goleta Valley. The submarine was one of the biggest submarines built up to that time, uh, and one of the most advanced pieces of uh, naval technology uh, up to that time as well. The immediate damage was minimal, no casualties, only minor damage to the Japanese's main target, the oil tanks. Huff says the Japanese used the wrong ammunition, otherwise the attack could have been much more devastating. There's a very good bet that those oil fields could have gone up and who knows when uh, they would have gotten those fires out and it would have been a, a much bigger attack in that sense. Now, 70 years later, city leaders recreated a sign marking the historic attack. But other than the War of 1812, this is the only time that the um, United States was attacked such a manner by a foreign country. The day was to remind the community of our past and to better preserve our landmarks. I would hope that those people that have the knowledge, they pass it on to their children so they can keep the, the history alive for future years to come. So what's become of the bombing site? Well, now it's the Sandpiper Golf Course. Now again today, they've recreated and put up a new sign so the next time someone visits, they'll remember this day in history. Reporting live in the Key Newsroom tonight, I'm Sharon Roger. Back to you in studio. Okay, thank you. Sure.